All right then, so currently when we land on our homepage, this fetch for data starts using our custom hook. And once it completes, it tries to update the state in the home components. And we see that effect right here because when the state changes, we output that to the DOM, that data. However, if while the data is still trying to be fetched while it's still loading, we then go to another page before the fetch completes, we get an error. Let me demo this. I'm going to go to new blog first, then home, then quickly back to new blog. Now the fetch is still going on in the background once we've switched to add a new blog. And therefore, when the fetch is complete, it still tries to update the state in the home component. But hang on, the home component isn't in the browser anymore. And that's why we get this error, because it's saying we can't perform a React state update on an unmounted component. The unmounted component is the home one. So we need a way of stopping the fetch when the component using it unmounts. So if we go home and then quickly to new blog, we want to stop that fetch from carrying on. Now to do this, we'll be using a combination of the cleanup function in a use effect hook and something called an abort controller in JavaScript. So first of all, what I'm going to do is go to the use fetch hook that we have right here. And we want to first of all run a cleanup function when the component that uses this hook and this use effect right here unmounts. So how do we create this cleanup function? Well, all we need to do is place the cleanup function inside use effect and we just return it. That's all we do. We return a value inside use effect and that value is a function. And then when the component that uses this use effect or this use fetch hook unmounts, it fires that returned cleanup function. So I'm going to do this below set timeout right here. So I'm going to say return and it's just going to be a function. And all I'll do for now is log to the console a message cleanup so that we know when this has run. So now if we were to go over here and I'm going to refresh and then go to the home component, then I'm going to wait for the data and move away and we can see the cleanup function run. But also if we move quickly away, we see it run again. So it's at this point that we actually want to stop the fetch that's going on in the background so that we don't try to update the state. So how do we do that? Well, to do that, we're going to use what's known as an abort controller. So let me first of all create this abort controller. Then I'm going to explain how we can use it. So we'll do that inside use effect at the top above the set timeout. And we're going to store this in a constant. I'm going to call it abort if I can spell it, that is cont. And you can call that constant what you want. It doesn't matter. But we set it equal to a new abort controller, like so. So we have this abort controller. And what we can do with it is we can associate it with a specific fetch request. And then once we've associated it with a fetch, we can use that abort controller to stop the fetch. And that's what we want to do. So the way we associate it with a fetch is by, first of all, adding on a second argument to fetch, which is kind of options for the fetch, and then using the signal property. And we set that equal to abort cont, which is our constant dot signal like so. And that's all there is to it. Now we're associating this abort controller with this fetch. And then we can use this now to stop that fetch. And we want to do that inside this cleanup function. So let's replace this with abort cont dot, and then we use the abort method like so. So what this does is abort whatever fetch it's associated with, which is this one. And so therefore, it's not going to carry on with the fetch. It's going to pause it. So let's give this a whirl. I'm going to save it, and then I'm going to refresh first of all. Then I'm going to go home and then move away quick and we still get the error. So what's that about? Well, when we abort a fetch, what happens is the fetch then throws an error and we're catching that error over here. And when we catch an error, we're then updating the state. So we're still updating the state. We might not be updating the data anymore because we've stopped that fetch, but we're still updating the state. We set is pending and also the error. And therefore, we're still trying to update the home component with that state. So what we want to do is we want to recognize that error inside this catch block. And if it's a specific type of error, if it's an abort error, 
caused by us, then we don't want to update the state. So let's do that if check right here. I'm going to say if and then error dot name. We have a name property on the error object. If that's equal to abort error like so, make sure you get your capitals here and here. Then we don't want to update the state. All I'm going to do is console dot log and we'll just say fetch aborted. So we know this has happened. Now, otherwise, if that is not the error name, at that point, we still want to update the state because if we get a different kind of error, like a network error or a server error, we still want to let the user know and we still want to set is pending to false. It's only if we abort the fetch right here and the error name is abort error, then we don't update the state and we just log this to the console. So hopefully that will solve the problem of the component trying to update and we won't get that error anymore. So let me save this and refresh to get rid of that error. Then I'm going to go to the home component and move away quickly. And now we can see the fetch was aborted. Awesome. So this now works and we don't get that error message. So that's how we can use the cleanup function and an abort controller. So what I also want to do now is just get rid of use state and use effect inside the home component because we still have them imported, but we're not using them inside there anymore. We use them inside this file. So let me go over here and we can get rid of this line because we don't need it. Save it and hopefully we'll get rid of that warning over here if we refresh. Yep, we do. Awesome. So that's all working now. So next up, I want to return to the router and talk about route parameters.